Welcome here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. Proud to be here with you every Monday through Friday between 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Eastern Time. We are here inside of MonPazPopcorn.com. So what's popping? And we're going to start off the first hour of today's broadcast with a West Genesee takeover. The Wildcats here with us. We're going to start things off with their JV boys basketball head coach, Eric Szczynski. And then in around 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time, we will be joined by Fred Kent, the varsity boys basketball head coach at West Genesee, celebrating the success of both teams and really the entire community coming off of their banquet that I was at and had the opportunity to cover just a couple days ago. Then in hour number two, you're going to get our Bearcat time with a double dose of the Bearcat break room and our exclusive multimedia marketing partnership with the Binghamton University Bearcats. We will be joined by Andrew Fang and William Marias Binney that will be here with us from the men's tennis program that just won an NEC title in the NEC tournament over the weekend in their first season in the Northeast Conference, and they have punched their ticket to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2013. So they'll be joining us on the broadcast, and we'll round things out as we always do on Tuesdays with the Ingredients to Success, proudly presented by Avicoli. So with that being said, and without further ado, we jump into our first of four guests today, Eric Szczynski, the JV Boys Basketball Head Coach at West Genesee, celebrating the 2023-24 season. Eric, how are you? Doing well, Dan. How are you doing today? Doing very well. And, you know, you, you got you got the good garb on, the Under Armour, the, the West Genesee, the, the flair, so to speak. So I, I got to ask you about this because we you, you talked about at the uh, banquet the fact that Fred Kent wears a suit. So who yeah. has the better flair outside of the game, you or Fred Kent, when you're walking around the community? <clears throat> Ooh. Fred, Fred wears, you know, you, you know, Fred's a golfer in the off in the off season. So he does have some good garb. I, I usually give him a hard time, but he, he does have some good garb. I, I will give him credit there. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm usually walking around in something West Genesee. So I'm pretty standard. I don't have too much flair. So, <laughs> so well, having that and wearing that, you know, on your chest here today and in general, this team, I know, means a lot to you. I know this season meant a lot to you in your transition back home, as you called it. Just to bring us into the 2023-24 season and what it was like to lead these student-athletes for junior varsity at West <laughs> Genesee for boys basketball. Sure, yeah. Um, you know, just a little background. You know, when I was here in the early 2000s, um, Joe Adams, you know, was the JV coach here for a very long time, you know, and unfortunately – you know, lost his battle with cancer a few years back. And um, Joe is a very important person to me. And uh, being here as a JV coach is something that is just a big honor. Um, you know, again, I'm an alumni here. Um, and kind of being back here leading this program, you know, um, has been just, it's kind of everything I envisioned when I got into education that I would always end up back here and coaching basketball here and uh, being around these kids in this community is just, it's just something that it, it's a privilege to be honest with you. It's really a privilege. Um, like I said, you know, you see me at Wegmans or uh, you know, around town, I'm usually probably in something West Tennessee to be honest with you. So something I have great pride in for sure. Yeah, and, you know, in, in this year, the team had so much success on the court. Yep. And, you know, you got to celebrate them as a team and also to speak on some individuals at the banquet. What can you share with us about the most prideful moments you had this season, the ones that stick with you for JV, for boys basketball, West Jenny? 
Yeah. So it, so for JV, it was a transitional year because I was with Brad as one of his assistants last year and doing more individual work in that role. And now this year you're doing kind of everything and it's more of a developmental role, um, getting kids ready. And you do have to put, you know, their development, well, one of my goals was to put their development ahead of wins and losses. Now, we were fortunate enough this year to kind of have both, um, but that's not always going to be the case. And, and it's funny. One of the things I did talk about at the banquet was we had a lot of success. We were 16-3, and three, but one of the times I point to was halftime of a game that we actually lost. We lost to a very good Jamesville DeWitt team in our second game of the year. And at halftime, you know, kids today, you never know how they're going to handle adversity. And it was the second game of the year. And we were down, I think, 11 at the half. And I went into the locker room and Fred and I were talking about what we were going to say. And those kids were not pointing fingers. They were not blaming each other. They were not screaming and yelling. They were having a conversation about what we weren't doing well and what we need to do different in the second half to try to be successful. Now, like I said, we lost that game. But hearing that was just, yeah. as a coach, it's something that we can go forward with these guys. We did something right in this team that we put together in the beginning of the season. So that, you know, it's, it's weird when you have so much success to point to a point in the season that, you know, you did lose a game, but um, that was a, a defining point moving forward for this group for sure. Yeah. And you know, and you, you talk about that, Eric, the, the fact that, but you and Fred at the banquet spoke on this, that when you wanted to find the right words to say to the team, you're walking by, you know, you're standing outside the locker room for a second, and you hear them talking to each other, you mm -hmm. hear them in the hallway together. You know, mm -hmm. there's, there's a leadership thing that you just can't teach. Yes. So when you have these young kids, I mean, we're talking about junior varsity, what does that mean to you for the future of mm -hmm. your program? And for the developmental process of those guys moving on to varsity, the fact that they're already trying to figure it out, they're already working things through together, and they're already looking to invigorate each other and push each other. Yeah, it, it's huge. This year was a, a huge year. I know obviously all the focus on the varsity team and, and the success that we had, but this was a huge year for us before the season started in, in picking the JV team because there's going to be a big transition that takes place, you know, next year. We've had, you know, and you know, guys like Jordan Kane and Gary McLean and Sincere, Joe Caval. We've had a lot of seniors that have been around three, you know, two or three years um, in this program, and they're all graduating. So these kids were very important, um, are very important to the future of you know what we're going to try to continue to build and continue to grow here at Western Sea. So hearing that and, and that level of maturity, like you said, I had all I had uh, 11 10th graders and we had one eighth grader. Um, so the maturity is was important um, because this is an important group moving forward in the next year for sure. And you working hand in hand with with Fred Kent, you know, you hear as you go through really any school that if they're going to do things right, they're trying to build things from the ground up and they're trying mm -hmm. to talk to everybody in that community. Like, Hey, if you're in the West Genesee community and you're playing basketball and you're 10 years old, we want you to know these things. And then you're 15 and we want you to know. And like you said, you know, JV getting ready for varsity, just that hand in hand approach that you're not teaching something or doing something that's far off from what Fred's doing because you want them to be able to transition to the offense, transition to the defense, you know, be able to fit right in seamlessly. And essentially we look at this farm system growing up through West Genesee. So how would you say that dance is of what you want to do and what Fred wants to do and trying to make sure that you can marry those two together? Yeah. So one of the key points that you pointed out, the like, you know, I'll talk to this first. Our youth program is unbelievable here. You talk to other schools and there's, you know, not everybody has what we have. You know, I'm on the board for the Camillus Youth Basketball Association, which again, like you said, we're telling coaches that are volunteering, you know, what we want done at the younger levels. And we had, I believe, close to, I think the final number was like 690 um, boys and girls, K through 12 playing Camillus Optimus basketball here in uh, this past year. Yeah. Uh, that's a huge number. 
you know, and that's a lot of kids that you're getting on the court at an early age and learning the fundamentals. Now, as far as like JB to varsity, you know, one of the big pledges I made to Fred when we decided that I was going to, or, you know, he, he decided that um, I was going to take over the JV program was I, I want to put development and system ahead of wins and losses. Um, I want to win, you know, don't get me wrong, but I, I think to a point like, um, we were playing at Utica Proctor, and they were they were pretty athletic, big, bigger than us. And I think maybe switching the zone would have helped us maybe win the game. But this is a man program, and we've played man-to-man defense, and Fred preaches man-to-man defense, and it's the backbone of this program. And, you know, those are things where I'd rather have our guys working on guarding bigger, more athletic kids yeah. and taking that opportunity to get better that day. And it might have cost – and who knows, uh, you know, but – I know our, our chances would have been better playing maybe zone at certain points, but it's more important that these kids are figuring things out and, and getting, um, like you said, our system and the way that coach Kent wants to do things um, down. Like that's more important. Yeah. It's hard to do. It's hard <laughs> to do, to be honest with you, but um, always thinking bigger picture. You have to. Well, yeah. And that's, and that's the thing, like you said, you know, kind of sacrificing the moment for, the long-term type of thing and trying to teach them how to work through something that they're going to need to work through as they advance to varsity when right there in that moment you thought, hey, maybe this is going to work. So for right. you, how do you find and develop your own self within this? If, if we are going through this farm system and we are leading everything into varsity, how do we make sure that Eric Szczynski has a stamp on West Genesee that you have kind of your own place within the Wildcats how do we build that program build JV and build up who you are as a coach so it's a couple things like um you know there's things like I won't tell Fred about and I'll run it in a game and he might say hey I like that you know what I mean or like where'd you get that from I don't so it's like sometimes we work together Fred I mean we say like we're talking like you know Fred runs this yes he wants us to run a certain system and a structure but he also gives everyone the freedom to, to do their own things. We all have our own styles. We all have, you know, things we've learned and picked up in the past that we think can help, you know, certain groups of kids. Um, you know, personnel is different too. So like, you know, when he has players like, you know, the players we've had the last couple of years, um, not taking away from anything from him, obviously, because you have to manage it. But those kids are talented. You know, at the JV level, you know, as good as some of our players are, they don't they're not as talented as the varsity kids. I mean, that's just common sense. I think that's true in every program. So there's certain adjustments you have to make with um, certain things to make sure that our kids are put in a position to be successful. You know, and our modified coaches do a great job, freshman coach. we Those guys are doing a great job preparing our kids to get to the high school level as well. You know, so it's the youth to, you know, the modified, the freshman, and, you know, it, it's a, good continuity we have going over here on that West Jenny. Yeah. And, you know, and, and for that to all kind of come together and culminate in the event that I was talking about over the weekend and, the, you know, to see you all together with the families, to see you celebrating the student athletes for varsity and JV to be together and have fun. When you reflect on moments like that and you have the opportunity to speak on, this team and you have the opportunity to speak on the season for you as a coach, what did you learn? What did you take away? Because I, I think, you know, it's so often we're trying to help other people, right? A coach is, yeah. is, is doing essentially a job of service. You know, you're trying to make sure that you're helping other people move forward. You're being selfless and making sure that these kids have, you know, do well in the classroom, do well on the court have a future for themselves. You're trying to bring out their best potential. So when you turn it back on the mirror and you reflect on yourself, what did you take away from this year and how have you evolved? Yeah, that's, that's, um, it's really interesting because you don't really think about those things. Like I do keep a lot of, like I keep basically, basically a notebook, you know, and I take notes on certain things that happen throughout the season, whether it be you know, how a practice went or how you teach a certain drill or concept. And, you know, then I'll go up to Fred's practice and I'll literally get my phone out and take video of certain things he does just to like, I'm, I'm more of a on-court visual person 
um, when it comes to this game. And those are things like you have to be in this profession. I call it like you're always stealing. You're always stealing from people. You know, you watch things happen and you're like, we have names of plays that are other schools just because we see things like, wow, that would work for our personnel. That would really work. Um, So you have to be, you know, confident in what you're doing, you know, as a coach, but you also have to be uh, a willing learner. Um, And when you work for somebody, and like I mentioned this at the banquet, I've had an opportunity, like I worked for Coach Marsh at Marcellus, you know, who's now at Auburn. Um, I believe he's got over 400 wins and working in a program at Liverpool with Coach Blackwell, who obviously his accomplishments speak for themselves. Yeah. And now being here, I've just been super, super fortunate in my path. Um, you know, and not only that, playing for guys like Jerry Wilcox and Steve Dunham back in the day, you know, back in the early 2000s, those guys are phenomenal basketball minds. And you have to just soak that stuff in and just try to morph all of that into like your own style and not try to be anybody else like i don't ever try to be fred or you know be ryan you you can't because you got to be true to yourself um but you know i think overall um it was just one of those things when when you're doing something you love and i truly I, i love doing this um you know you take a lot of pride in what you're doing and and um you hope you always have good intentions for the kids, yeah. the families, the communities, and, and, and the program. So, And that coming here from Eric Szczynski, the West Genesee, West Genesee JV boys basketball head coach for the Wildcats. Eric, you saw the guys do it on the stage. I'm going to give you an opportunity to do this here. You and I are going to do a rapid fire. We're going to hit each other with a couple questions here before we get ready to bring Fred Kent on. You get the okay. first one. We'll go back and forth. What do you got for me? Those kids asked you some really good questions on yeah. on Sunday. The, like, yoga, the was... yoga pose still has me because I know I know like the basic yoga poses everybody knows from hearing them in the movies. I don't know right. anything else. So that yeah. one stuck with me. Chad, Chad Smith is definitely one of the comedians on the team. He'll be back next year. He would be a good one to have on the show at some point. Yeah. He, he would entertain you. Um, <laughs> I know we talk a lot about um, – you talk a lot about Syracuse, and I heard you talking about you would do an interview with Jerry McNamara. Is that accurate at any point? He was one of the best. So is he your favorite S, favorite SU player of all time? I'm a big SU guy. He – so I like Jerry a lot, but my favorite – I don't want to even say, say but as an aside. My favorite SU basketball player of all time – was decided when I was nine years old Okay. and Cuse is in the house. Oh my God, which that sign is right here. Yep. For those 96. Guys. So yeah. So Cuse in the house. Oh my God. And I can't believe we are friends. I'm friends with his children and it's surreal to me all the time, but John Wallace. So, wow. and we, wow. we actually have built a friendship over the last 10 years, which is crazy to think of, I can go back to being nine years old and standing in front of the TV when they started chanting Cuse's in the house. Oh my God. And then now I'm 39 years old and I've played golf with them. I've sat down with them and, and done a ton of shows, you know, over the phone, we've done stuff in person and yeah, I, I still, I still can't in my head. I'm like, I'm friends with John Wallace. It's so crazy to me. So we're, we're the same exact age and I'll give you this little insight. This would drive my parents crazy. But in 1996, my brother and I actually put that on our answering machine on our home phone. <laughs> we, we started the message with, the Q's is in the house. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. And I remember one day my grandmother calling being like, what the heck is going on <laughs> in this house? Yeah. So I'm with you on that. John Wallace was a great – that was a heck of a run. Yeah, no, I – I, you know, that answering machine, I, I kind of feel like I want to do that on my answering machine today. But so, Eric, what is, is for you, what's your favorite sports moment ever? Either one that you've experienced or one that you've seen? Ooh. Um, one that I've seen, I did, I did go, it was my senior year of high school. I went to the Dome to watch the national championship game on the big screens and seeing you know, we talk a lot about community and I, I love Camillus. I love Syracuse. Um, that was pretty cool. Like the moment I've seen live. Um, I think, you know, 
for, and then I think this year also being a part of being actually a part of winning the sectional championship with this group um, and just see, cause they've been clawing at this for a few years and just seeing all of their work come to completion yeah. was just a great moment to see those kids celebrate together and run to their families and coaching staff getting together and hug. like, it's just one of the, it's the moments you can't really put words to it, but when you watch it and you see it and you experience it. So I'd say the one I watched was, you know, even though I wasn't at the national championship game, it felt like we were. And then the experience was, I would say this year. Yeah. You know, and, and like you said, clawing away at that and having the opportunity. And then this year bringing me back to, you know, just a few years ago with that, state title and how close everything was and where that says the program is at currently right now. What's your last question for me? Ooh, um, your, what's the spot your night, you're going to, your favorite place to go to dinner. My favorite place to go to dinner. This is what 39 year olds talk about. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite (laughs) place, my favorite place to go to dinner. See the thing that's really tough. And I tell people this all the time is like, I work, I don't just work with restaurants. I work with, I only work with people that I believe in and places that I actually utilize. So it's, it's hard, but I'll pick, I'll, I'll pick one off the beaten path. And I would say probably Laska's out in Mm. Auburn because they still give you portions like COVID never happened and their prices have not really jumped like COVID never happened. So I, I like to, you know, I like to live in a world where we didn't have this wily pandemic that did all these fun things. So I think Laska's has stayed pretty true to big portions and fair prices. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say, well, I'll, I'm going to pick for a lot of reasons, but if I, if I was going on a date and I'm like purposeful that this could be somebody special in my life. I'm, I'm going to consider taking her to Laska's. That's what I was Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I, I told one of my friends who owns a nice restaurant in downtown Syracuse. I said, if I ever come in here with a woman at night for dinner, then you need to know that the underbelly of that is that there, it's a serious relationship. I said, I'm not bringing anybody to your restaurant Cause it's very elegant. It's super nice. The food is fantastic. I'm like, I'm not bringing some girl here just for a date. I was like, if I bring somebody here, right. then, you know, you, then you know what I'm saying. <laughs> and I, and I have not done that for the record. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, my, my last question for you, Eric, let's see here. All right. You know what? Going off of that, if you were to plan a date coming, so I want you to give some advice. We're around the same age here, 39, 38. So, as a single man in society, I want you to tell me what a good date would be in Syracuse so that you say we all steal from each other so that I can steal from you. Oh, man. <laughs> no. Hey, uh, so I've been married a, a while now. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I haven't done the, like, uh, I haven't been in the downtown scene in a while. We, I don't, I know there's a lot of nice new places down there, but like, so back when we were dating, um, we used to love going to the Empire Room um, in downtown Syracuse. I thought that was just a cool, like you're saying, it's it's not one of those places that's like over the top, yeah. But it's also not, you know, it, it's a it's a good middle ground where you're not trying too hard. You got to find that place where you're not trying too hard, but like it's still a nice place, classy, but you can still you, know, you can have a couple drinks. You can have a nice meal, get good service. Um, we love uh, one of the places where we go. We live, we're west end of town all the time, but the only time I really make it out to the other side of town is we go to Delmonico's. Yeah. And I think service, food, it's just always on point. And I just think it's one of those places that creates a good ambiance, um, you know, or something like that. But as far as what people do today, I, I don't know what they do after they eat. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's, um, it's hard. Yeah. It's, it's definitely different, but you know, if you find a good place to eat, 
that's you know what it comes down to. So got to be the middle ground. You can't be over the top, and you can't be you know. To it's got to be that 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 honey. I we thought that I thought the Empire Room was always just that that great spot. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. There's some good places out here. So that being said, Eric Szczynski, West Genesee JV Boys Basketball head coach, here with me this morning. Eric, I appreciate your time. As always, we're going to jump into our conversation and ask Fred Kent to say nice things about you, but I appreciate you being here today. Make, make them, you know. <laughs> hey, what is this Eric Szczynski kid bringing to this program? Just, he's great. He's doing a great job out here, obviously. So. All right. Well, I look forward to talking with you soon. Thanks, Thanks Eric, for your time today. I appreciate it. Have a good one. You too. See ya. That coming from Eric Szczynski one more time, and we're bringing in uh, Fred Kent here on the broadcast this morning. Now, as we have a double dose of West Genesee basketball celebrating the JV as well as varsity teams in an incredible season where both teams had six losses combined, three each and only six Combined. Recording so in a progress. Lot of great stuff with both of these teams, and Recording we're going to have the stopped. opportunity to bring on Fred Kent here in just a moment. Here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, where sports meets life. We appreciate you watching and listening all around the world on YouTube.com and Facebook.com, both backslash Wake Up Call DT and on Wake Up Call DT.podbean.com. So. As we get set to have Fred here on the broadcast, we look forward to the opportunity of sharing some time with him and getting his thoughts on this season as well. And uh, we appreciate you all for being with us here this morning as we celebrate West Genesee, a school that I've been connected to for about a full eight years now. And it has meant the absolute world to me to be able to have that. We have him here picture in picture. Mr. Kent, how are you? Good, Dan. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing doing well. So I just had Eric on the broadcast, and I said that I was going to do my best to have you say nice things about him. So tell me <laughs> something nice about Eric Szczynski and what it's like to have had him here working hand-in-hand hand with you as, as him and I spoke about the importance of him not only leading the JV team, but to being parallel with you so that these student-athletes can be prepared to jump to varsity. Yeah, I, I think, you know, we're very fortunate to have Eric in the program. We've had him now for two years. First year, he assisted me, with me on the varsity and, you know, was a sponge and uh, just a great communicator with, with kids. And, you know, he was able to easily make connections. He has a great personality. He's a witty, smart guy. And this year, you know, he took over the JV position and I thought did an outstanding job. Um, I think JV coaches are are very unique the good JV coaches are very unique where sometimes they will sacrifice maybe their own personal philosophies and whatever the varsity coach wants to do, they, they take that and, and, you know, do what's best for the program. And Eric definitely does that. I don't, you know, I don't know if he always agrees with everything that we do, but he will, he will always teach what, what we want to do or what I want to do. And I, I'm really appreciative of that. He's very loyal. Yeah, and he said that in one of the games this season that, you know, man's been such a pillar of West Genesee and that he mm -hmm. said, you know, we, we could have switched to zone, potentially help us in that specific game, but we understand the importance of man and, you know, the importance of having that within the program and that the guys were going to need to learn how to, you know, fight through it in a man-to-man -man defense situation. So he said specifically that as an example where you sacrifice the moment for the greater good of trying to, you know, get guys to understand the things that are most important in the program and the things that you lean on and focus on. And so to your point, you know, he said that, that he could pinpoint places in this season where it was about making sure that he was on the same page with you even more so than that specific moment. Absolutely. I mean, Eric gets it. It's all about development, especially at that level. It's a, it's about development, at, you know, the varsity level too, but at the JV level, it's all about development and it's about improvement, getting better. And I mean, if a kid gets beat, then you learn how to rotate and help the helper and things like that. And, and Eric is, you know, he knows all, all that stuff as far as how we want to play rotation wise and stuff. So, um, you know, that's why I appreciate him so much. I, you know, he doesn't get enough credit. 
That coming here from Fred Kent. And Fred, you know, uh, such a fantastic season. You mentioned at the banquet that that uh, I so thankfully had the opportunity to MC thanks to you. And we were at the Wildcat. You spoke about the fact that this team had the most wins ever in a season. And, you know, celebrating 23 wins, only three losses, uh, an opportunity to advance to the state title game, winning another sectional championship. As you reflect on this, I know that you want to win every game, and I know that you want to put another banner out there, but I also know the fact that as humble as you are and as much as you speak about other people, West Genesee is is blessed to have you. So have you taken the time to reflect on this season and find the good and the positives outside of the fact that that last game didn't end exactly how you wanted it to? Uh, well, first of all, thanks for, for joining us at the Wild Academy. You've been a great friend, and um, you did a great job. And I, I know I put you in a tough spot in your creativity and, and talent. You were able to to do your thing and uh, put on a, a good show. So I appreciate you for that. Thank you. Um, you know, I <laughs> as you saw in the banquet, I you know I start reflecting on the season just about the bus trip coming back. I get emotional. So honestly, I I try not to think too too much about it. What I really think about, and I, I don't mean to sound cheesy or or anything, but just the relationships, especially with the seniors. Um, it's always about the seniors because you get two years with those kids yeah um and that's really what i've focused on and their transition into college and their transition into just not being you know day-to-day on the basketball court and making sure you know we're we're talking to college coaches and taking care of our grades and attending school so you know the job doesn't stop maybe the games do but i feel like i'm still coaching and trying to make sure those relationships stay strong and that our kids are, are finishing what they need to do, which isn't always, <laughs> it's just, it's always working, but they're good kids. You know, there's, there's something that you spoke on, you speak in a, you know, when you talk about these being good kids, it was something that echoed throughout the banquet at the wildcat over the weekend. And it was in those moments where, you wanted to teach something, you were getting ready to go into the locker room to say something, you're standing out in the hallway for a second, and you listen and you hear that they're already building each other up, they're already talking to each other, the leadership is coming out of them, they're telling each other, this is what we need to do, we can get back in this game. You told those stories. As a coach, what does that mean to you in the moments where you're trying to figure out the words to say and wanting your message to get through. And you hear these young men spreading a message for you and they're listening to each other and it's working. Yeah. I mean, and we say it and we challenge every team to do this, but take ownership of not only the team, but of the season. And, and that was a great example of sincere Smith doing that. Yeah. You know, during sectional time, it's, it's you know, win, survive, and advance, and lose, you go home. And Sincere and, and the rest of the team was, was not ready to go home. And, uh, and I'm, I'm really appreciative of having, you know, the opportunity to coach kids like that. It's one thing to say it, and then for the other 16 guys to buy in and, and agree and move forward, I, that's what makes this group so special. I know I've I've said it before and, and I'll echo it again and it's it's not because of our friendship and because of our connection and, and the fact that, you know, I mean, taking all that out of it and looking at it impartially and looking at this community, we are spoiled to have you as a coach. Oh. And the way that you work and and I gotta say this, I know Eric gave you a little razz about it, but I think every coach should wear a suit on the sideline. And so for you to dress and act in such a way to lead in such a way where I think the suit is a, is a reflection of how serious you take the game, how serious you take the kids, how serious you take the community. You know, Fred, having you here is something that is, it is a gem for us in this community. What keeps you here? What keeps you at West Jenny? What keeps you doing it? Why has this been such a great home for you and why does it continue to be 
Um, well, thank you. Those, those are very kind words. I did, <laughs> people didn't always feel that way. I think when I first started at West Genesee, um, I guess I, I just really enjoy living in the in the school district and being part of it. It's a blue collar community. Um, you know, I feel like you know people on the outside maybe don't understand it, but we really do have to to fight for what we get. Um, we're not handed things. I know maybe sometimes on the outside it looks like that, but um, the people are incredible, and they've always the community has always enjoyed our work ethic and and grit. And uh, our other sports teams play the same way. I mean, I share a classroom with Frank Calabuf, the hockey coach, and yeah. you know, he's an amazing coach and an amazing guy. And just some of the the traits that he builds in his program, you see that, and you you know you want to mirror that in your own way. Um, so, you know, it, it's awesome. Our coaches in our district are very supportive of each other. Um, you know. I just, I'm very, very fortunate, really. I, I don't feel like I'm doing anybody a, a favor. I feel like I'm fortunate to to have great parents and support and kids that are willing to trust me and build build those relationships that I talked about before. So I, I don't really, I, it's very nice what you said, but I, I feel just as lucky or more so. And when you, when you talk about these relationships and, and you speak on these connections, it was something that I brought up when I was out there, when one of the guys asked me who my favorite, you know, high school athlete was and, and, uh, you know, basketball or something like that. And, and yeah. I, and I had said Luke Sutherland. And when I think of Luke, I go back to Binghamton. I go back to finally getting to meet his parents and his sister when I was there off the court. And, I go back to that moment with him and Will Amica and it's really hard to choose when I go down that line and cam and, and, you know, I think I keep saying, when, when's the next McLean coming up? There's gotta be more McLean's because <laughs> think about all that, but uh, you know, I mean, Christian Rossi and, and so on. It's, I mean, and, and duds and, and the list goes yeah. on. Doug Getty. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Kings. Yeah. And Luke and Zachary's. Yeah. And the Zachary's and, and, and Luke, to me, we just formed like a big brother, little brother, which is weird because he's far taller than me. But <laughs> but when we, you know, that that connection, when you build these connections with these student athletes, like you said, making sure what they need to do in the classroom. I mean, you want to win and you want to have success and you have. But do you feel when you have these conversations with a Christian Rossi, with a Will Amico, with a Luke Sutherland, with the Zachary, like when people come back, do you feel like you did more than coach basketball? Do you feel like that's reflected in, in what they're doing in their lives? Do you feel like the messages you're trying to get through life-wise as an extension of family, really, that those messages are getting through? Uh, I mean, maybe a little bit. I don't like to take too much credit because I mean, those families you mentioned, I mean, they're, they're really good families with, with great support and, I don't really feel like I have to do that much um, other than focus on basketball and just getting the team chemistry, you know, together in a little sacrifice because the family structure, at least, you know, all the kids you mentioned, they're, you know, they come from great families and great support systems. So, um, you know, when they come back, I'm just glad. I'm just glad to see them. And what's one of the best things about winning is all of the, the texts and messages from from friends and former players, coaches, um, you know, that's, that's what makes coach at West Genesee so special really. Yeah. And, and I know we have just a second here with you and so many places I want to go, but you've seen it, you saw it on stage. We didn't get to do it. So we're going to do a quick one-on-one -on -one rapid fire here. You get to ask me a question, Fred, what do you got for me? <laughs> you know, you look like you're in great shape. What have you been doing? Well, thank I'm you. I'm jealous. Thank you. I feel like I could be in far better shape, but I, you know, I honestly walking during COVID was so important to me. Mm -hmm. And so getting back to that, you know, the dog and I went out and, you know, took a walk, Miss Lily, 
But, you know, I, I think I think walking, I think just being purposeful with different things you do. Stretching, uh, like I, I do. There's a lot of things I'm doing kind of in the background of my health in the sense yeah. of like chiropractor stuff and like making sure I'm stretching, making sure that I'm getting healthy in my body all the way through and then just trying to get back to cardio and, you know, take care of some things and do all that stuff that, you know, is, is that people don't want to do those crunches and all those things that people, yeah. people don't always want to do. So thank you. I wanted, yeah. I wanted to ask you at the banquet, but I, you know, it's crazy there. I get so <laughs> razzled. So my, my Good final, for you. Yeah, no, thank you. you. I appreciate it. I think you gave me too much credit, but my, my final question for my question for you, Fred is what is when you finally get to take a breath, and I know that you're always doing stuff and you're always looking at film and I know you got papers everywhere working. But when you get a moment, because you have such a wonderful family and I got to be with them after the game, after the uh, banquet for a little bit, what what would you like to do with your family if you could do anything right now in this moment? What are the what would you like to do? I'd love to go on a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I I'm very fortunate because. My family loves sports, so you know we we watch the NCAA men's championship, the NCAA women's championship. We watched the WNBA draft last night. We're going to watch the playoffs together. So um, I couldn't ask for any more from my family. So they, they give me more than I deserve, probably. So I guess I would defer to them and say, what do you want the family to do? Because they've uh, sacrificed a lot for me, starting in probably September to. To now so I, I owe them i you know they get the remote control so to say they get the point <laughs> where we're headed yeah no that's you know understood i hope you get to take a vacation that was what i was kind of pushing this toward you guys you guys need to go somewhere and take a vacation now my sixth grade daughter's uh playing aau basketball now and i'm an assistant coach carrying the clipboard and keeping track of fouls and timeouts <laughs> so yeah, of course you are. Of course you're doing something else. <laughs> but Fred Kent here with us, a West Tennessee varsity boys basketball head coach. Fred, as always, I appreciate the time, and I very much appreciate the opportunity to MC the banquet. I know that's something that happens every year, and I don't take lightly that this year you uh, you asked me to be there and you asked me to help out. So that was a huge honor of my life, continues to be, and obviously our connection and our friendship over almost a decade now means a lot to me so thank you for that thank you very much i really appreciate it i hope uh you know next year i think we can do something like this radio show during the banquet i think maybe it would be better <laughs> <laughs> yeah do something like this let them see you and get you off stage because i know you love to speak so much up there <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah exactly that's my goal <laughs> all right friend well listen thank you for everything and uh, truly thank you for the honor of being able to do the banquet it means a lot thanks for having me today i appreciate it your time all right i'll talk to you soon all right thank See you me. thanks fred that coming here from fred kent once again west genesee varsity boys basketball head coach as we had a west genesee takeover in hour number one of wake up call with dan tortora here this morning and hard to believe we're almost through that hour so uh, absolutely incredible to have just these wonderful, wonderful coaches in our community. I want to thank Eric Szczynski, the JV head coach. And of course, I want to thank Fred Kent, the varsity head coach, working in tandem to build up West Genesee boys basketball, the West Genesee Wildcats in general, and the West Genesee community. So many thanks to them. We're going to take a step aside for a fast break. And when we come back, we're going to get you set for the Bearcat break room. In hour number two, Two Bearcats will be joining me. A double dose, under promise, over deliver. We promise you one conversation every Tuesday with the Bearcats. We have consistently done more than that. And today we will have a duo with us from the Binghamton University men's tennis team. Andrew Fang is going to be joining me as well as William Marcois Binney will be joining me. So very excited to have Fang and Benny from the tennis team joining me here today, coming off of an NEC tournament championship in Binghamton's first season playing NEC men's tennis. So definitely an awesome first impression. So getting that victory, which punches their ticket to the NCAA tournament, 
and it's the first time since 2013. So a little bit over a decade since we've seen men's tennis in the NCAA tournament, and we're going to see them this year. I feel very spoiled as we just started working with Binghamton University as an exclusive multimedia marketing partner a few weeks ago, and I already get to celebrate a championship team and celebrate these wonderful student athletes. And as you know, last week in our Bearcat break room, we had Nick Zazula on the broadcast, the head coach of the men's tennis team at Binghamton University, going into the NEC tournament and coming out of the NEC tournament we will have Andrew and William speaking on the success, the championship, and their eyes forward. And I'm so excited to be able to have them on the show today. So we'll take a step aside for a fast break, and we'll be back with both of these gentlemen, Andrew Fang, joining me first, right after this. Hi, this is Amy from Mother's Cupboard, home of the whole frittata. We are open daily, 6 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. For takeout orders, call 315 315- Four three two zero nine four two, and tune in to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora for our monthly food challenge and try our Wake Up Call signature menu item available seven days a week. Here at Mother's Cupboard, we are Central New York, and it's our honor to serve you. Ma and Pa's Kettle Corn and Popcorn Factory remind us that every day is worth celebrating at 201 7th North Street in Liverpool, New York. Open Monday through Saturday in-store and always online at maandpazpopcorn.com. Serving our Central New York community and beyond, order anywhere, anytime at maandpazpopcorn.com. Stop in to get a tin at Ma and Pa's on 201 7th North Street in Liverpool, New York to get your half-price refills for the rest of your life. Come to Ma and Pa's for your holiday gift giving for family, friends, employees, and clients. And remember for fundraising and events to call 315-450-6272. That's 315-450-6272. Ma and Pa's Kettle Corn and Popcorn Factory. How corny are you? This is Jimmer Sikowski, owner-operator of Chick-fil-A Cicero, 7916 Brewerton Road in Cicero, right in front of the Home Depot. I had a deep feeling that God wanted me to do something bigger with my life and to help people, help others. I kept putting Chick-fil-A in my life, and I realized as I was going through the franchise selection process that uh, positively impacting the lives of others was really core to what we do here at Chick-fil-A. First of all, it starts with the food. The food is brought in fresh daily and we bring in local produce we prepare to order in the kitchen we hand bread our chicken we hand spin our milkshakes it's it's great food it doesn't taste like fast food i I think the second thing is is the way people feel when they come in a chick-fil-a restaurant it's different We, we try to treat people with intentional kindness here which is very different and deeper than good customer service and so I think it feels remarkable for most people to come in a Chick-fil-A restaurant. And then lastly, the impact that we try to have in the community is very different. It's a big part of the expectation of every operator of a Chick-fil-A restaurant is that they're actively engaged in their community, they're a leader in the community, and they're, they're making a difference. When they realize that what we're striving to do is to shine a little light in their life, that's a very, very different experience uh, than you will have in any other quick service restaurant. And it's that remarkable experience that I think people will emotionally connect with. Carvel DeWitt, it's what happy tastes like. Do you know why? Because we make ice cream. Creamy, rich, flavorful ice cream. Not yogurt or iced milk like some of our competitors. Ice cream. Fresh, by hand, daily. For the calorie conscious, we have something new for you. Our new Carvelite. Same great flavor, creaminess, and texture of our regular ice cream with only 35 calories an ounce. So whether you want an ice cream cake, flying saucer, dasher, Carvelanche, hard or soft ice cream, we will satisfy your craving with our fresh, handmade, regular, or new Carvelite ice cream. Carvel DeWitt. It's what happy tastes like. The Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York, is located on 3680 Milton Avenue in the Home Depot Plaza. It is your family-friendly sports bar and restaurant. Folks, some sports bars aren't family-friendly. Some family-friendly restaurants are not sports bars. The Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York, is proud to be both. 
It is that marriage that you've been looking for for years. The Wildcat Sports Pub is your home base for your sports bar and restaurant needs, games for the kids, indoor and outdoor activities, and enough things on the menu to come back every single week and get to try something new. They're open Sundays from noon to 8 p.m., Monday through Wednesday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., and Thursday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to midnight. For reservations and party information, call 315 315- 487-2222 for the Wildcat family-friendly sports pub and restaurant. GG Cards and Breaks Like, comment, subscribe! GG Cards and Breaks coming to you on 639 Delmar Place in Syracuse, New York. Open seven days a week for your sports card and trading card collecting Hobby, you will find them Monday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And on Sundays from 10 to 5, they have everything from soccer to baseball, basketball, football, all sport, AEW, hockey, as well as UFC. And they have Disney Lorcana and Pokemon cards. You can get singles, graded cards, packs, and boxes. And they're the only store that I know that has every MLB, NFL, and NBA team in their own box with you having the opportunity to find your favorite players and collect your favorite team. Go and do what people have been doing for decades, which is collecting sports cards, but do it in a unique and special way at GG Cards and Breaks, supporting local, supporting the central and upstate New York community, and supporting people who truly love the hobby as well and are just fantastic people in our community that really do care about everybody that comes through the door. With that being said, I am honored and I am privileged, of course, here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora to be able to bring you what we call the Bearcat Break Room. And in that Bearcat Break Room, we have the opportunity to tell the stories of the Binghamton University Bearcats every single month. And today is a very special day as we're coming off of a championship weekend. And that championship weekend was a huge, huge weekend for Binghamton University and for their emergence inside of the NEC. So it is without further ado that I have the opportunity to bring in with me picture in picture here, and that is Mr. Andrew Fang here with me, wearing the t-shirt that shows all that love. So Andrew, uh, happy to have you here. I want to know, and I got to co- talk to Coach because I had Nick Zazula on the show going into the tournament I think I need one of these t-shirts, Andrew. How are we doing? Good, good, Dan. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well. And first and foremost, man, I was following all the way through. Huge congratulations for everything that y'all did out at West Windsor, New Jersey. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it was a really special one. Uh, I was actually able to win the uh, the conference uh, on my birthday. So that was extra special. Yeah, you know, and that's that's incredible. So happy, happy belated to you. That experience for you, did you, did you, did they do anything special for you? Did you still get a birthday cake? I know we talk about when someone's birthday is on a holiday, you're always saying like, okay, do they at least, you know, witness your birthday as well? So you guys win a championship. Was there still some time to celebrate your birthday? I mean, we went to five guys after got five guys milkshakes. So I guess that kind of counts, but, uh, yeah, um, they let me carry the uh, the title, which was nice. Awesome. So, yeah. But, yeah. We'll... Huge here, and it's in the first season that you're in the NEC as, you know, as an associate member. So for you to be a part of seeing not only history in the making for Binghamton, but to see it in year one in the NEC after spending time in, in other conferences. What is that like for this team to have such a giant first impression in the NEC? I think it's it's huge because we, uh, you know, gone are the days of the dark days where we were in the MAC conference. We'd have to drive five hours, six hours, close to 10 hours sometimes to play like really strong schools like University of Toledo and like Western Michigan. And you know, gone are those days where we have those really long and grueling road trips. And I think coming into the NEC, uh, we knew we had a target on our backs, you know, a new school, like we got right away, we were favored to win our conference. So we knew we had a big target on our backs from these other teams. And, you know, leaving that first impression, like 
this is you know our conference now like we we are a big member in this conference and we are a threat now in this conference it was really big and for the other schools in our conference and like like you said you know gone are the days of, of those long travel you know moments and, and now makes a little bit more sense what does that do for a team because we we talk about I think so many people watch a team play on a court and say, wow, they don't look like themselves or they were doing this, they weren't doing that. And not always taken into account of the fact of the amount of travel about just sitting and waiting, you know, and, and the things that your body, you know, getting your body ready for something as opposed to, you know, having a, a lighter travel, an easier way to do it. So, you know, what can you say to that effect of it, that when you increase travel and you put more hours there and you're, your body's in an uncomfortable state and you're not really, you know, feeling like yourself, how that changes a match and, and how, you know, that transition to have opportunities with teams that are an hour away, right up the highway can do a lot better for this team. Yeah, for sure. Well, primarily we are student athletes. So we, we prioritize school over athletics most of the times. And with these longer road trips, we end up missing more classes. You know, it, it's really hard to get work done or like schoolwork, study for exams in a tight van and without much, you know, Wi-Fi and stuff like that. It's just not like the most ideal study conditions. And for us, that bleeds into the weekend because now we're going into the weekend all stressed about school because we're not getting the proper amount of studying we should be getting done. We're missing classes and you know, these 10 hour road trips, they really like, they take a burden on our academics and we end up playing that match, maybe not at a hundred percent because we're worried about an exam that we had next week on a Monday where we might be getting in like late Sunday at like 3 AM or we have just like a lot of projects or like assignments due that week that we haven't really had much of a time to look at over the weekend. So it's like all this academic factors all play kind of in a role especially on those long road trips because it stays in our, it stays kind of in our head but with these shorter road trips the luxury we have is that we can leave on a later date we don't skip as many classes and we don't get back as late so that gives us more time even throughout the weekend to do a lot of schoolwork and catch up and get academics done you know you you said something here that you know i i just i really appreciate and i respect and like you said here at Binghamton University we're student athletes and we are students first. And when we're on, you know, we're, when we're driving in that van and you don't have the Wi-Fi and you're in a cramped space, it's not as conducive to get your work done. So many things in today's world of collegiate athletics is a transfer portal, NIL, sports, sports, sports. And you just sat here and said, hey, we're happy to be the, in the NEC because of the travel, because it allows us to not have to skip as many classes and not have to miss as much work and to be, you know, better for us as, as students and student athlete, I have to first and foremost say thank you for that because it is so great to hear that in today's world. And secondly, just why that matters so much to you, because in collegiate athletics, you know, we're, we're talking about student athletes potentially being employees. We're talking about all this money going back and forth and, and here you are, saying i'm happy to be in this new conference because i think it's going to help me as a student which i think is such a great beacon of light for collegiate athletics to hear that not only in binghamton but hopefully for other people to pick that up and remember the student and student athlete yeah for sure so for you like why does that mean so much why why does the scholastic side have so much weight to you to the point where that was the first thing you were thinking about i think because Everyone on our team, you know, we've we've all got ambitions for ourselves and we're all driven uh, both academically and athletically. And on the academic side, I could touch on this because, you know, you look at all our majors across the board. You know, my fellow Canadian teammate, he's in pharmacy school right now. He's the only person. He's the first student athlete in Binghamton to actually be in that pharmacy program. And for him, like, you know, it's just like the, it, so much work for him. And, uh, you know, you look at some of the other ones, like I'm a philosophy, politics and law major. We have quite a few biomedical engineerings. We have a lot of people majoring in finance and business and it's just and uh, or in medicine, going to pre-med, like all of these majors. It's like we all have high ambitions for ourselves. And I think that's why it's like 
it was top of my priority because I look at the guys around me and I see how much effort they put into the academics alongside myself. And that's why, like, the first thing for me was, you know, how this could really help us uh, as a team, like, achieve our goals both on the court but also off the court. So for you in this first season in the NEC, obviously it's gone well with a championship now. But when you go back and you look at the competition and some of the places that you got to play on the road, how would you describe the Northeast Conference and the level of talent that you're going up against on the court? Yeah, the Northeast Conference is definitely a tough one. Uh, every single school we've played, they got really scrappy players. They fight, they dig, they never go away. They always fight until the last point, and that, you know, that creates a lot of challenge for us, but we've learned to embrace that challenge. You know, few matches, we've lost the doubles point. We were down in a few matches, but we always found a way to win, and that's that's credit to our guys. But at the same time, it's also credit to the NEC, uh, the co our, our competition, because, you know, it shows that they – it doesn't matter how the numbers are put. Like, we might be – you know, selected by coaches to win the conference, but that doesn't matter to any of them. They'll fight, they'll dig, you know, they'll put everything out there. And I think that's what makes the competition so strong is that every team is willing to fight. Every team has a chance. And on any given day, uh, any team can win. So for you, why the Bearcats? Why do you think, I mean, like you said, when you're picked to finish first, when, when you have that kind of, you know, sitting on your back, the fact that there is this level of expectation, even though it's your first season in the NEC, and then you go in as a top seed in the NEC tournament, and then you have to face these teams. You know you're going to get their best matches. You go up against Stonehill, you go up against Lemoyne, and you go up against St. Francis, only giving up two points in three of these matches here outscoring everyone in the postseason of the NEC in men's tennis by a combined score of 12 to 2. How does a team that has expectation and a team that was put in a place where you were favored, how do you stay focused? How do you stay locked in? And how does this team take care of business regardless of seeding and regardless of prediction? Uh, well, I think to answer that, um, I want to quote uh, our senior captain, Kyle Weeks, on that. Uh, his quote to us was that, I look to my right, I look to my left, and all I see is my brothers. I trust you guys until the end, and that trust will never go away. I think that's the, our team is like really close, and our edification among ourselves is super strong, which allows us to see each other on the court as brothers, as teammates, and this, this trust that we form with each other is really what pushes us over the line. You know, from from yelling at each other across the courts or from cheering from the sideline and everything like that, you know, we kind of push all the expectation aside and we really focus on the things that we can't control, which is helping each other out on the court, whether that be helping a teammate net to each other, cheering really loud from the sidelines and really leaving an impact. And it's just stuff like that. You know, I think it's, it's really made a difference for us. And this weekend, we, you know, against Lemoyne, against St. Francis, we lost a doubles point. But in both matches, we came together as a group and we told each other that we trust each other and there would be no other group that we'd rather be out here with. And that really helped us hone in on the singles and push all four points through for us. And you say that here with Andrew Fang, of the Binghamton men's tennis a student athlete celebrating the NEC championship that just happened a couple days ago en route to an NCAA berth for the first time for Binghamton men's tennis since 2013. You spoke on the fact of your captain saying, I look to my left, I look to my right, and all I see are my brothers. Sometimes this tennis sport can feel very individualistic. It can feel very much on an island. What do you guys do to, and I know you said shouting back and forth and, and showing that appreciation, what do you do in those moments to pick each other up, not just in a match, but in practice and in general or, or just on campus? How do you stay a team when in the high octane situation, sometimes you can feel like you're on an island. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, there's two things to it. Uh, one is that we always try and uh, hang out off the court. You know, uh, we're always really tight off the court. Like whenever we're studying and we see one of our teammates studying by themselves, 
we always go and sit with them. It's never like, uh, you know, we never like go split up sitting. We always like sit with our teammates, whether that be they're eating or like they're studying or like they're just, you know, walking around campus. We catch up to them. And we like always have a quick chat with them. And I think that part is huge, how close we are as a team and how we're always wanting to be around each other and like hang out with each other and talk with each other. And uh, the second thing is, is that uh, our coach sets us up with uh, four core values and they're all, one of them being gratitude, grit, edification, and compete. And these four core values is what holds our team together, I think, the strongest. And coach preaches to us that every single practice. So I think those four core values is really what holds us as a team together and keeps us as a team together because all four, all our team, our whole team has these four core values in their minds when they go play, when they're at practice, and that keeps us together. You know, Andrew, you, you spoke about uh, a couple times the word edification and that word meaning the improvement of the mind and understanding, especially by learning. Why is there such a focus on the improvement of the mind and the improvement of understanding when it comes to this team? I think the main vote, the what I would say to that is that, you know, edification it's the learning of the mind and uh you know as a team you got to constantly be able to adapt you know like you walk in every practice is going to be different you know every competition is going to be different every day is going to be different and at the end of the day it's about how you're able to adapt and how you're able to help your teammates along with you adapt to a new mindset because every day it's going to be different you know one day your forehand might be off and another day your serve might be off Another day, you just might not be feeling the best physically, but it's good to know that you have teammates alongside you to help you and to guide you to find the right path and the right state of mind um, to push you through these challenges every day. Andrew, you're young in your time at, at Binghamton, but this is the first time that the team is going back to the NCAA tournament since 2013. It's been over a decade. This opportunity now has left everything at zero zero right it's there's there's no points out there you won a championship you did what you did in the regular season but now we're looking at a whole new season what can you say to this team's combined mental fortitude the connection that you have and the preparation of knowing that now the task is to go win an ncaa tournament for the first time in over a decade I think we're all feeling re we're all feeling ready. You know, we're all obviously very happy with ourselves, but we know that our job is not done. Our season is all over. We start training again tomorrow. Um, I think mentally we've all been dialed in this whole year, and we see this as just another step to achieving a bigger goal. And uh, I think all the guys, including myself, we're ready. You know, we're locked in. We're gonna have some few good practices, and we're gearing up for the NCAA. So you're wearing the shirt today as we as we showed that. Can we show it again? Yeah. So the the NEC champions for 2023-24. And as you celebrate this as a team, we're going to get into something called rapid fire in a couple minutes where you and I get to put each other on the hot seat and have some fun. But as you celebrate right. this as a team, what can you say about what Nick Zazula has done as your head coach and how that message has gotten through through to all of you as a unit, why he's been such a good leader, why this staff has been such a good staff. I think the main one is gratitude. You know, day in and day out, Coach Z's biggest preaching thing is gratitude. He'll preach it wherever he is, and I think that's what really sticks with us because, you know, you, you see our, you know, we have resources uh, that some of these teams don't and that we're really grateful for you know we have ability where we ability where we could get core facility with nine outdoor courts we have great uh, sports medicine staff we have a great athletic trainer we have a great uh, fitness coach and and we have you know two great assistant coaches and I think all these resources come together and it makes us very for in a fortunate position like we're playing schools like Merrimack who only have four courts in an indoor bubble to use to play on or St. Francis who only has a three court facility. And it really makes us see how grateful we are to have all of these resources and the support staff around us. 
And I think that's one thing that Coach Z has really pushed into all of our, our brains. And I think that's really, um, really important for us um, as we, you know, as we're playing because it just makes us really grateful for everything that we have. What would you say to a prospective student athlete looking at Binghamton University? You know, you spoke about the facilities and, and your experience so far. If somebody came onto campus and you were tasked to bring them around campus, bring them to your facilities, speak with them about the program, what do you think are the selling points of getting a Binghamton University education and being a part of this men's tennis team? Definitely the experience that you're going to get out of it. You know, I, build, I I think in the NEC, our team is one of the closer teams with each other. You know, we, we do really see each other as brothers. And just the experience, you get you get to experience college with, you know, eight other group of guys, uh, eight other guys. And it's just, it's just an amazing experience so far. I've only finished, I'm only a sophomore. I've only finished two years here. And these past two years have been some of the funnest, some of the craziest. You know, I've experienced the lowest. I've experienced the highest with these other, with other, with eight other guys. And I think that's the main thing that I would preach to him and to the recruit or to somebody just walking around Binghamton is that the experiences you're going to get from being here at BU and being on the men's tennis team. So that being said, Andrew Fang and I are going to play some rapid fire. We're going to get two questions apiece before. We have uh, William Benny join us on the show. So Binghamton men's tennis getting a spotlight for the Bearcat break room for the second week in a row, and this time coming off of an NEC title. It can be about literally anything, Andrew. It, it could be about life, could be about pastimes, music, movies, whatever, food. So I'm going to throw it to you first. You get to ask the first question. All right. What's your favorite type of music? That's a tough one to answer. Favorite type of music, I, you know, I like a lot of different music. I respect a lot of different groups and singers, so it is tough. I mean, if I had to choose, I'd probably say it's like a mix right now in this moment. It's a mix of Broadway music, country music, hip hop, and R&B. It's kind of like this dance of it all, but probably country and some type of hip hop r and b dynamic i would say is in the car right now it depends on my mood and it's funny cuz people that have known me for a while when they get in the car and they hear that first song play whatever whatever my pandora is on they go oh okay that's the mood that he's in right now so <laughs> they kind of feel that i'm going to stay with music here andrew you coming out onto the tennis court if for the entire ncaa's when you walked out, they played a song that was your theme song. What song would you tell them to play at the NCAAs? Hall of Fame by the script. I think that that's been my I've listened to that pre match since I was since I was very young. So I would say that that song definitely would be my um my walkout song if I had one. I'm gonna tell you that is one of my favorite songs, and I've listened to it multiple times in the last couple of weeks. So yeah. I can definitely appreciate that for sure and the meaning of that song, and I understand why you use it. What's your next one for me? What inspired you to start this podcast, if there was an inspiration behind it? Yeah, you know, being a broadcaster – whether it's on the internet or, or it's TV or it's radio, I've had the opportunity to work in the TV world, to work in the traditional radio world, and to work in the internet world. And the inspiration behind doing this is, number one, I love talking with people. I love getting to meet people and getting to know people. I love helping people feel seen. It, it, it gives me joy to tell someone's story and have that person say to me, like, thank you so much that, you know, you, you help me feel safe. Or they'll get emotional and say, like, I never talked about that. Or or their parents or their grandparents will come up and say, like, that meant a lot to me that you spoke with my daughter, that you spoke with my grandson. And so, I mean, why I do it, I love sports. I believe in positivity. I believe in the goodness of people. And I... When I set out to do this, 
I set out to do this in a world that I thought was more kind and I thought was more accepting and more faithful, more appreciative. And, you know, being here in 2024, I feel like everything that I set out to do, I really have to understand the importance of that because I've always had a strong faith in God. I've always had a big connection with wanting to bring people together and positivity and making people laugh and all that stuff. And and I just feel like every day when I wake up that the world is crying out for the positivity. And so I've accepted that I don't know the word Q-U-I-T. I can't say the word because it makes me want to throw up. And, and I'm not even being facetious about that. But the the reality that if I left, the wolves would be the only ones left. And if I can protect people from the wolves, I'll do that to the best of my ability. And I think being an honest, God-fearing, kind, compassionate person in the media is, is not something I see a lot. And I'm going to be me no matter what. But I think in what I've seen in this world, it's imperative for me to really understand that I might be the only honest voice somebody gets in the media. And and I never thought that that would be true. So I hold a lot of weight to that. And I just hope that I help people. Honest. I know it's a long answer, but I just hope that I can help somebody. I really do. Yeah, that, that's a great answer. Uh, I really like that. So my, my last one for you. So you're from Ontario. I love Canada. I am a massive. I don't know if you could see it back here. I'm going to grab it. I am a massive Raptor fan. Raptors, yeah. So I want to know what life was like growing up in Ontario, what you can share with us. And if you celebrate the Raptors at all in your own personal life. Yeah, so me and my dad are really big Raptors fans. And uh, to that, I'll I'll just say one experience that I had. Uh, you know, it was yeah, when Kawhi Leonard played for the Toronto Raptors and he hit that crazy rim-bouncing shot to beat Joel Embiid in the 76ers. I'll always remember that day, you know. It was me and all my family friends. We were all together at my house watching the game. And it was just a moment of silence. <laughs> When that shot went up and everyone just exploded and there was just laughter and joy and everyone was hugging each other. And to me, like, that was just a really special moment for everyone, for all my family and my friends. And, you know, growing up in Ontario, I think that's that basically sums up the experience for me, you know, yeah. um, having really close people. And, you know, it's just a very vibrant city. Um, you know, so many things to do. The atmosphere is incredible. And, you know, sports brings us all together in Toronto, in Toronto and especially in Ontario, as we can see with the Toronto Raptors, the Toronto Blue Jays, Toronto Maple Leafs, and all these, all these teams, all these sports teams, they really bring a community together. And it was just really amazing to see. Well, Andrew, as you and I get to know each other over the years, my goal is that we go to we we go celebrate a Raptor, at least one Raptors game. We go celebrate. We go to Jurassic Park. That's what I think we need yeah. to do. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so that uh, coming from Andrew Fang. First, I need to get a T-shirt. I got to get in touch with Zazula. But uh, thank you for your time here today. Excited to have your teammate on. Final note here, William Benny. Tell me something about him that you think we should know before he comes on. He's been, you know, Will's been one of the most mature guys uh, that I've met. Uh, he's been my role model ever since I stepped foot in this campus. And, you know, I look up to him every single day. He's one of our captains. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure that he's going to – he's really going to be impactful uh, for the rest of – for the team, for the years to come here. And uh, I look forward to playing with him in the years to come and to play with him alongside him in the NCAA and keep making history. Andrew Fang here making history with the Binghamton University Bearcats men's tennis team NEC championship in their first season in the NEC and moving on to the NCAAs for the first time since 2013. Andrew, I appreciate your time. Happy to have you here for the first time. Looking forward to have you back and hoping for some good news as we step forward in the NCAAs. Thank you, Dan. Thank you for your time as well.
Of course, man. Take care and go Bearcats. Okay. Yeah. Thank you as well. Thanks, man. So that coming once again from Andrew Fang here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. We're going to take a quick step aside and get William Benny set up here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora in an extension of the Bearcat break room. We promise you the Bearcats every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern time under promise over deliver giving you more than one Bearcat yet again. And that'll be coming up right after this on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. In these unique times, there are those in our community that give us a sense of normalcy and positivity. Pizza Man on 50 Oswego Street in Baldwinsville has been here for you for over 35 years and is here now. Call 315-638-1234 or order online at pizzamanbville.com to bring those familiar tastes into your home. And remember to come see our monthly on-site broadcasts centered around the community and our Baldwinsville Bees. Pizza Man in Baldwinsville. Any way you slice it, they are always here for you. Looking for your next ride? Look no further than Great Lakes Honda City, located on 7140 Henry Clay Boulevard in Liverpool, New York. Serving our community for decades, their new and pre-owned vast array of vehicles are available to you Monday through Saturday on site. To search from home, shop at GreatLakesHondaCity.com. Call 315-365-5576 to set up an appointment. That's 315-365-5576 for Great Lakes Honda City, 7140 Henry Clay Boulevard in Liverpool, New York. Great cars, great people, great lakes. corporate purpose at Chick-fil-A is to glorify God by being faithful stewards of all that's entrusted to us and to possibly influence all those who come in contact with Chick-fil-A. And what became increasingly clear from our success at Cicero is that people love Chick-fil-A. And also, I think we recognize that, you know, we had a great opportunity to grow the brand and grow our platform. I felt incredibly grateful when I was, you know, selected to be a Chick-fil-A operator. I think what it's meant for me, what I've come to realize on a very deep level is that this is a calling for me. It's not a career. It's not a job. The Lord called me to be a Chick-fil-A operator and to use these restaurants to glorify Him and to positively influence other people. I'm blessed. I'm very blessed. Head to Chick-fil-A Clay on 3974 State Route 31 in Liverpool, New York. And a welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, where sports truly meets that thing called life. We appreciate you being here every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time. And I now have the pleasure of welcoming William Morais Benny to the broadcast here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. Picture in picture with William here this morning and ecstatic about the opportunity to speak with him about the success of this Binghamton University Bearcats men's tennis team after having his teammate Andrew Fang here on just a, l a few minutes ago on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora worldwide to you on YouTube and Facebook.com, both backslash Wake Up Call DT and on Wake Up Call DT.podbean.com. William, how are you today? I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. Did I get Marias? Did I do it right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, Muraj, yeah, that's yeah. pretty good. That's I was, was going to say because uh, I'm looking, I'm looking at the name and uh, and and I have a little bit of history here. If you'll allow me to share for a second, is that I know you're from Portugal, and I had the opportunity to work with many, many people from Brazil, obviously speaking Portuguese when I worked at. Walt Disney World. So it may surprise you, but I know a little bit of Portuguese. I can I could talk in numbers and I got some words. And I, I also asked the uh, women to teach me the beautiful words that sound like something that they're not so that I could use those on dates. And they gave me some of those words. <laughs> yeah. Brazilian Portuguese has a bit more of a charm than maybe Portugal Portuguese. Yeah. But um, 
I, the Muraj was was on point. I have to say, I have to say, it was pretty good. It's a very common, uh, very very common last name to have there. Um, so it's uh, it, it went from being like the most common name for anyone to say to you know being uh, something completely out of the ordinary here. Yeah, yeah, no, and and that's and and I'm sure like that culture change from Portugal to America. What was that like for you? Kind of build out the story for us of the journey of being from Portugal and then finding yourself here in upstate New York and, and just how that all came about. Yeah. Um, so I'm my, my dad is half uh, British, half Scottish, uh, grew up in Canada, met my mom there. I was born, then we moved to Portugal. So I, I grew up there my like basically my whole life, but um, I, I obviously was privileged enough to also uh, learn how to speak English. So I grew up really with both languages. So I think that compared to uh, maybe other teammates, uh, there wasn't uh, as much of a language barrier, which you know I'm very grateful for. Um, in terms of how I ended up at Binghamton, um, I tried to play professional tennis for a couple of years. And it was uh, pretty tough, you know, the lower level tennis um, circuit is um, a, a reality that I don't think that many people are aware of because they see on TV the Grand Slams and uh, like the US Open and, you know, now Monte Carlo. Um, but people that are from like 200, 300 in the world to 2000, uh, they're on the future circuit. And you're going from small venue to small venue, making basically no money. The people, the, the the player that wins the tournament probably breaks even. Yeah. Um, so it, I was trying to do that. Um, see, you need to go through it if you want to reach the the top level. And I kind of realized, you know, I'm probably not going to make a living out of this. Um, I'm probably not reaching top seventy in the world. So what am I going to do? Um, I ended up at Binghamton because it was the best business school out of all the offers that I have or that I had. So that that's really, um, I think, a big part of why people choose Binghamton um, over maybe some other schools in our conference. Um, we, we have better academics. We have a lot to offer there. And I, I wanted to study finance. So it was a, an amazing opportunity. Then, of course, um, I actually committed on the... 20th of July with school starting on the 15th of August. Um, I wasn't set on any of my other offers um, because I did not think that they were good enough academically. Uh, Coach Zazula knew that I would commit to to Binghamton because I, I talked to him before. So I said, you know, I'd like to go there. I'd like to play for you. I'd like to study there. I'm not willing to go to some of these other schools that don't have as much of an emphasis on academics um and then yeah i mean since i've been here it's been it, it's been great um it, it's been really great we have our own facility which is uh you know in the northeast not easy um indoor courts we have six indoors nine outdoors amazing coaching staff a grad assistant assistant coach head coach and um you know that's a that's a privilege compared to other schools, I guess. So that's kind of the, the story behind how, how I ended up here. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and I appreciate you sharing that story. And, and like you said, you know, that the people don't really know what the circuit looks like and they see the top, but they don't see what the rest of it looks like. What did that kind of teach you as you, as you go forward? Because here you are playing tennis, you're in finance. So it begs the question for me, will you finish up at Binghamton go to look at playing professionally and now with a finance degree, try and change what that circuit looks like. Is there a chance that we could see you on that side of it saying, Hey, we got to create more opportunities for people. <laughs> um, so that's a very interesting part, I think of the sport and definitely like having a, a finance degree or some experience now being involved in a lot of, finance related activities could help um however it's kind it's a it's a tough place to be in i think because it, those circuits aren't really bringing in that much money yeah um and in terms of oh would i play professional after college well i mean 
it really depends on how well you perform in college. I, I'm a sophomore. And by the time you're done, you can really see, okay, this is what my future is looking like. Are you beating guys that are 300 in the world? Um, if you're not, well, then if you go and play pro, you know, it might be a couple of years before you might reach that level. Um, and, and that will come with probably like $50,000 that you're spending per year. Um, and, you know, you need to try and get that money somewhere. So in the eventual case that I'm playing extremely well in my senior year and it, it makes sense to, to give it a shot. Um, and for sure the finance degree would help. I mean, it, it definitely, uh, wouldn't harm, um, wouldn't harm me, but I think that in terms of kind of changing, uh, the, the scene behind tennis, which is very top heavy, would uh, definitely be something interesting that I'd uh, maybe try to approach later on in my professional career if if the opportunity um, comes up for sure. I mean, definitely having experienced it. Here on the broadcast, here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora in this edition of the Bearcat Break Room, centering on the Binghamton University men's tennis team. We're here with student athlete William Morais Binney. And William, for you, this season in the NEC, like you said, you're only a sophomore, but this is a new conference. The switch over from the MAC to the NEC. What do you like about it? What's been the difference for you in a positive way? Why is the NEC a good place for Binghamton? So I think that um, first off, starting with the Mid American Conference, it was uh, we were competing against schools in Michigan, which um, wasn't that convenient. Now we're geographically uh, better located. I think that we're competing against schools with a more similar profile. Um, I, I think that putting us in positions to succeed is also uh, very, very important. You know, it's you really develop when you're at four all in the third set, when you're the match that's deciding who wins, when you're um, put on the spot. And that's what this conference is doing for us. They're putting us on the spot. They're putting a target on our back saying, you know, these are the guys you, you have to beat. And, you know, we don't, we don't really blink. It's for us, it, it's a, it's an opportunity. It's a challenge. We love to, to face it. So that's why I think uh, that he sees a, a great place for Bampton. When I was speaking with your teammate, Andrew Fang about it, he said, it's better travel. And because of everything that's asked of you education wise at Binghamton university, this is more conducive to the educational side of it. What can you say to that point, knowing that, you know, that the Northeast Conference is very much in the Northeast? They're going to have the addition of Chicago State, but the Northeast is in the Northeast. And you have, you know, you have a school in Lemoyne that's an hour right up 81. So you are yeah. playing in the Massachusetts and in the state of New York and in the Connecticut's. You're not having to go that far away so what does that do for you on on your side of it and do you feel that on the educational component it is it is a better conference for everybody um yes so i think educational it is i'll go into that a bit i think that also something that you can you have to say about it also is that like you can fit three matches in one weekend right on the road we did that we couldn't do that before we're playing, we're playing more tennis. We're um, kind of, we have more time for school, but also we have more time for matches. Um, so then in terms of uh, kind of facilitating the academic side of it, like most of the guys on the team, which is pretty impressive, um, are in tough majors and very involved in what they do. So I think that, that Probably almost everyone, definitely the freshmen are starting to get involved a bit more, do more than the normal student academically. Um, and then you have all this going on on uh, during the week. We're doing 20 hours of just on court in the gym. So then, you know, you have the extra time that goes around all of that. Um, and then weekends, which we're competing. So if you're closer, it's huge. 
Um, but I have to say that we're still, we're probably playing more um, and we're still arriving like fairly late, but our time management skills definitely much better and we're missing less classes. Yeah. Um, so it, it just looks like a more packed weekend with, with less, um, with, with just with less overlap on uh, Sundays and Mondays and Thursdays. Yeah. yeah. You know, and for you to be in the NEC for the first time ever as, as you know, a program and to be picked so high, right. To have that respect that comes in, you're the top seed in the NEC tournament. There's a lot of expectation that comes from that and getting everybody's best matches. How did this team respond in your opinion, in such a focused and not buying in your own hype ego type of way, because it would be easy to say, okay, well, if you're picked high, if you're picked with this belief, you're going to win it. You can get caught up in that. If you're the number one seed, you can get caught up in that. I mean, you're seven and one in the conference going in. So when you have all of those positives and all of those expectations, what about this team kept you focused and what about the leadership of this team helped you to not buy into the hype of it all so i think that it comes back really to our to our values and what we talk about a lot um being seated really you know it, you'd be a fool to think that because someone puts you in a certain place therefore a certain outcome should happen it doesn't go like that we've played the sport for too many years to buy into that we're well aware and i think that maybe some of having close matches we were seven and one in conference but we had had some close matches um and i think that those close matches kind of really made us feel that it, it's not going to be easy and we were very clear that we had to go on court and we had to perform um and we really did not buy into the seating at all you know you you get on court it's you against someone else and it's as simple as that um, you, you need to narrow the focus as much as possible um, and be very strong just point by point. Uh, at least that's how I thought of it. Um, and that's that's what helped me speaking a bit into the leadership um, of the team. Kyle and I, um, we always emphasized, you know, like we're, we're not better than anyone else. Um, matches have been extremely close, but, you know, we believe that we can do well. So we kind of put ourselves in the position of, hey, we're not, we're not favorites, but we can do really good stuff. And I think that's the mentality that kind of set the tone for the weekend. You know, and <clears throat> as you, as this team has, has gone through this and, and made the history that's been made first season in the NEC for men's tennis and a championship, first NCAA berth to the tournament, nationally since 2013 like we've talked about you're only a sophomore but there is an opportunity to win a national championship that this team is going to be able to move forward into as practices and everything gets started up early this week what can you say about this new season this opportunity there's no points everything's zero zero and now Binghamton can step forward on the success that you had in the regular season and in the NEC tournament. But now we're in an entirely new season. Why Binghamton? Why right now? Why does this team believe that nationally you could do some good things? I think that we have, first of all, we have a lot more time to prepare. So other teams are still competing. They still haven't played their conference tournaments. We have three weeks you know, or two and a half weeks to get ready. We have the time. We also did not lose a singles match the whole weekend, which was very impressive. So I think that if, if we work a bit on the doubles, that we really have the depth in our team. We don't really have a large drop off from um, the first three to the last three. Yeah. Um, and so I think those two, those two parts are key. Um, and we're, you know, we're very, we're very focused on what we're doing. I mean, um, Sunday I saw we're doing four hours. Uh, we're, we start training again tomorrow, just two days off and back into it. And, and I think that with a, a long season where we're playing every single weekend, that a couple weekends off will really 
um, do this team well, and we'll emphasize on uh, on the strengths that we already have for sure. Yeah, you know, and, and when I look at the sport of tennis in and of itself, and I spoke with Andrew about this too, sometimes it can feel very individualistic. And you talked about not losing a singles match, but how do you try to keep each other in it from your point of view? I got I got Andrew's thoughts, and I'd love to get your thoughts too about how does this team stay a team when you can feel like you're on an island and let's say this guy did, did his job and this guy did his job, but now it's down to you and you got to keep the team alive. You got to keep the team afloat. How do you get around each other and remain a team at times where you're on an island? So I think that understanding that on the court, doing the best for yourself is doing the best for the team um, is important. Uh, also, Momentum is a very big factor in college tennis. There's a lot of energy. There's a lot of volume across six courts playing all next to each other. Yeah. You can feel the shift of the dual match. Um, so the team that wins four points, so there are six singles um, and three doubles. And the team that wins the majority of the match uh, the, of the matches will win. So you, you get the feeling of what's going on, starting with the doubles. So you, you see your teammates are a breakup, um, maybe on the other two courts. And so your opponents, a lot of times will like think that lost cause, like even if I do well, you know, they're already losing. And so there are a lot of mental things that go on with being just in close proximity to everything that's that's going on. Um, so I think that it's really actually putting yourself on that island and saying, okay, doesn't matter what's going on. I'm going to put myself on this island and for the next two hours, I'm going to do every single thing I can to get a point on the board for the team. Then there, so there's that part. And then the other part is we're very big on edifying each other. So no negative reactions to losing. We don't want to anyone to on the other courts to think that it's not going well and that you know and create a little bit of anxiety or a bit of panic um so we're we're very big on just positivity um edifying each other you know someone misses a shot you shout from a couple courts over don't worry like let's go um come on next point um anything and uh so i think there are those, those two uh those two main main factors you know, and it's it's funny because you and Andrew both talked about edifying or edification. And, you know, to ed when you look at the word edify, instruct or improve someone morally or intellectually. And then edification is is that improvement of understanding, that improvement of the mind. Why is this such a central word to the program to the point where you both I'm talking to individually not knowing that the other person said it but this edify edification the utilizing of making sure that you're building each other up you're building up your mind you're improving your mind improving your understanding and that you're instructing or proving improving somebody morally or intellectually why is this word such a key cog in in the wheel that makes men's tennis run at binghamton well, it's part of our core values first, but I think that it's also just, uh, we, we have other core values um, that are ingrained in us. Uh, we have gratitude, grit, edify, and compete, and each of them have obviously their specific meaning. But I think specifically about uh, edify and edification, it's all about perspective, yeah. right? You're not just trying to shove energy into someone and say, like, let's go. Like, no, you know, you're trying to, make them understand the perspective of the situation. You know, like, okay, you may be serving for the title, but, right, you've, you're, you've done so many good things, right? To, to be here, there's no reason to think that it's this or nothing, right? You have a whole team supporting you. You have a great serve, you, you know, you can hit, hit, hit the serve you're comfortable with. You know, try and find your forehand um play into your strengths um you know it, it's not just purely uh about the injecting energy right um so talking about how how you're talking about with the kind of the intellectual side of it maybe 
um, it, it just talks about the perspective that we approach the things and having a bit more of a overview of the situation instead of focusing on just a, a specific problem and really getting um, too caught up in it. Yeah, you know, and, and seeing this team be together and have fun together and, you know, win, win a championship and make some history and now have the opportunity for an NCAA berth, you know, it's, it's, it's huge. It's huge for Binghamton. It's huge for your program. It's, you know, you guys are smiling, you're having fun, you're having a great time. Do you have a, a favorite moment of this past weekend that just sticks out to you that you're saying, hey, in practice or in an upcoming match or in school, if I have like a moment of adversity, I'm going to go back to this time. Do you have a moment or two that you take away from this past weekend? For sure. Um, I, I have a moment on a personal level and more on a team level. So we started the tournament by playing our first match. We got on court at 10.30 p.m. It rained outside. Everything was pushed indoors. We were the last match on. Um, and it I started playing horribly. I mean, I thought I was intense. I thought I was moving. I wasn't hitting the ball late, not connecting, playing. And then, you know, you lose a bit of confidence and the other guy gains confidence. The other team had already played that day. Um, so I, I then flipped it around. And when I was flipping it around, the other uh, our other teammates uh, won. And so the, the match stopped because we had already won. Uh, four points, which is what it takes to, to win the dual match. Um, the next day, I started playing okay. I was playing probably one of the tougher opponents that I'll face in this conference um, and also started playing usual. But then I, I lost the first set and I said, you know, why don't like, why don't you outdo yourself? Why don't you just do better than you've ever done play the best set of tennis that you have and i put in my head actually um this set i had in my head this set is going to be like 6-0 6-1 6-2 i just had it in my head from the beginning and i was like every point focusing on every point what can i do to improve I'm constantly thinking in the future and not really thinking of oh that last set was kind of average i lost it the day before i didn't play well um just okay what i need to do to improve it regardless of the situation that we're in right now yeah. forwards think forwards um and i i won the set six one i was a break up in the third set and then the team also won so my match again got stopped um but that set the tone then for the final the final awful conditions crazy wind um and i really did not get caught up in that at all i was just thinking you know what do i need to do to win what do i need to do to improve my level and to be a more difficult opponent to face um i'll be looking at that moment for sure in the future uh then the other the other moment in a, at a team level that i'll look back at is we lost the doubles point against lemoyne and saint francis so in the semi-final and in the final um, out of the three doubles that you start with, we lost two. Um, we lost two doubles both times. And so we lose the doubles point against two teams that we had won the doubles point before. Um, and it just, you know, confusing at conference, semifinal, final. Um, but we just locked in and um, didn't blink. And sometimes you just, you just don't need a blink. You don't need to think about it. You just need to go out there and keep going. Yeah, you know, and, and, and when I reflect on that and, and said, you know, what are those moments that stick out to you? You went to moments of adversity. You didn't go to, oh, I'm hoisting the trophy. I'm doing this and that. You went to the moments where the team was challenged. You went to the moments where you had to rise above something as a team and individually, which I think is huge. And it speaks to your character and to the character of the team. Yeah. We're now going to jump into something called rapid fire. You and I get to put each other on the hot seat. It can be about literally anything. A couple questions apiece, and we have to answer it. It is live video and audio all around the world. So if we sit on camera and say nothing, it's going to look weird. So you, William, get to ask me the first question. What do you got? So, okay, wait, let me let me get this clear. So rapid fire is just I ask random questions, and you um, have to give a quick answer. Yeah, so so basically, you can ask any question about any topic, and I have to say what 
is first on my mind in that moment. And you're, so you're going to, you're going to do one, then I'll do one and we'll go back and forth. Okay. Yeah. So, so a question each. Yep. Couple, okay. two, couple each. Yeah. All right. I'll start easy. Uh, favorite color. Favorite color. Green. Green. All Not right. because of money, but because I just like, <laughs> I just, I like the color green. I always have. And my Jaguars okay. are teal and, you know, obviously Binghamton's <laughs> got some green in it. So, you know, there's a re the green seems to follow me. <laughs> All right, let's see here. All right, William, uh, favorite food that you could live on for the rest of your life if you had to eat it every day? Sushi. You can put whatever you want in it, and there'll be <laughs> rice on the outside. Um, so why why a podcast? Why a podcast? I would say, you know, I, I spoke about this a little bit with Andrew, but I would say, you know, I I, I love telling stories. I love sports. I I feel like my show can be a vehicle or any show that we do can be a vehicle to bring the things that are important into somebody's life. So <clears throat> the tagline for wake up call is where sports meets life. And the reason uh, that I chose that is because I want, I want to be able to bring comedy, bring faith, bring community, bring morals and values into people's lives by talking about sports, a thing that so many people love in some way, shape or form to utilize sports as the vehicle, but to actually put in the car, the things that, you know, you need for your life in general. And in my opinion, to get back to heaven is, you know, to do things the right way and with goodness in your heart. So I do what I do because I, I love, I love the opportunity to get somebody to think, to get them to laugh, to get them to reflect to be emotional in a positive way. I, I love that that I can bring something out of someone and that, you know, in turn, they can bring something out of me too. Interesting. So, all right, William, let's see here. Mm -mm -mm. If you could jump into the fictional world of any movie, TV show, or cartoon, what world would you jump into and why? Avatar. Avatar, okay, why? Freaks of nature. Uh <laughs> <laughs> it'd be cool to be blue and they're you know they can like jump and do all types of crazy stuff for sure avatar all right for sure avatar. Um, go ahead get one more so so uh why the decor i see a lot of different stuff going on in the background music sports yeah. kind of a lot of stuff everywhere uh can we talk a bit about what's the the main reason behind uh, the design in the background. Yeah, everything in the studio, there's a bunch of things that are off camera too, but everything has its purpose. And there is a Binghamton towel here as well. But everything, uh, everything's got its purpose. There's uh, my basketball championship or the only uh, tournament that I've ever won was my last year in a tournament. I think I was 14 we won the tournament. It was indoor and outdoor basketball. Like indoor and outdoor tennis, you have to play differently, and yeah. you have to be ready for the elements, and I got MVP. So I have that one. I have yeah. my Jaguars tin, which is from Ma and Pa's, and you can actually fill it with their kettle corn and popcorn, so I had to put that in here. But there's a, there's a lot of different things. If I'm going to point out a couple, I'm going to point out my grandmother's bowling pin, which is in the back here. She, that's the last pin she knocked down. She bowled until her 80s. She lived to be just shy of 101, my mom's mom. And uh, I always call her G-Mama. And uh, G, at 98 years old, she, I, I handed her that pin and I told her, you know what it was. And she was holding on to it in my, uh, one of my old studios. And she said, do you have a pen? And I gave her a Sharpie. And she wrote on it at 98, she wrote Marie, which is her name, and she wrote, mm -hmm. I love you. And so that's what's on the pin back there. And, you know, I would say my little, my little sister, Franny, who plays lacrosse, I have her autograph behind me here because I'm super proud of her. And, you know, I got a hockey stick of, I think, like the first game that I went to with the Syracuse Crunch and... So there's, there's a ton of stuff here. I think what needs, so every, there's nothing in the studio that doesn't have meaning, but I think what I need behind me, and I think that, you know, I've already said it to Andrew, I'm going to say it to you, I'm going to say it to coach, because I figure, you know, as a group, we can make this happen. I think I need an NEC 
t-shirt for Binghamton that should go in the studio, a championship t-shirt. We could probably, we could probably try and get you, uh, maybe one of these. Yeah. I'm I'm saying, I think, I think that belongs somewhere back here with me. So (laughs) I would say that. I I love the variety. I love the variety. It's, uh, there, there's a definitely a a lot going on and it all seems to, uh, you know, kind of touch on, uh, on some special moments very 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 interesting yeah i would have to say this to this sign this sign and, and it's usually behind me but i i pulled it out here uh, to talk about it i think last week on the show but it's funny because if you look closely it has a pig that's flying and you know because people say oh like when pigs fly but the, yeah the quote here is hope makes the impossible possible and my mom gave me this in my first apartment out of college in Dunmore, Pennsylvania, and it has followed me everywhere. And I cannot tell you how many times I've looked at this sign, happy, angry, sad, confused, stressed out. Yeah. And, yeah. and that sign has always, always refocused me back to yeah. God and back to the belief that if you hope in something, you can do the impossible. So yeah. I mean, for, for me, sometimes it's, uh, you know, what, what if, what if it can turn out better than you think, you know, yeah. what if, and, uh, that, that definitely, you know, keeps me, uh, kind of studying when, when I, I'm, I'm tired. It keeps you in matches on Sundays after you've played for hours and then have to have a test on Monday and need to study and until three, four in the morning, uh, you know, but but for sure, there's uh, there's something great on the other side. I think you know, what if pigs can fly? Yeah, you know, and I think I think starting my own company I already proved that a pig can fly. So, yeah. my my last question for you, William, is if you there's a lot of different places I can go with this, but if you were tasked to be a leader in this mm-hmm. world. Where would you lead from? What would you consider home base of your leadership? And what is the first thing, if you could change anything about the world, what's the first thing that you would change? Okay. Um, so if, if I were to be a leader, location, ideally completely disregarding uh, economics and government policies, it would be Portugal for sure. Okay. Just friends, family, great people, um, good weather, you know, can go to the beach. Um, just for me, one of, uh, one of my favorite places in the world. Now, um, if there would be one thing I would change in the world, um, the other the other week I was kind of thinking of uh because I had kind of a, a family situation which um a close relative of mine uh, is not doing too well and Sorry. it made me really think about how um a lot of times we are are very in the moment and can not understand kind of the scale of things and the importance of uh some activities so many things we do are really not important in the grand scheme and we throw away maybe some morals to achieve those whereas it's actually how you go about your day-to-day that will create an impact right and that will actually make someone say make someone happy make someone um enjoy their day make someone think of something that maybe they wouldn't have um and it's really by maybe more being that friendly face um than by doing anything you can to accomplish something um so i think that if there was anything i would change would be maybe if we all had a bit more consideration for each other and and really try to not judge a book by its cover and understand um really where people are coming from um i think that would be for me the main thing i would change for sure 
celebrate the moment, understand the morals and values, and that there's no good time to take time off of those morals and values and to not judge a book by its cover and give people the opportunity to show you who they truly are. Awesome yeah. words coming from William Marias Benny. And you know what? I got to say this, William. I'm sure Porto, Portugal is pretty proud of you today. And I'm sure they've been I proud of you so. all the way through. I hope so. I hope so. So for you, for the team, for Binghamton University, the Bearcats men's tennis team, NEC champions and heading to the NCAA tournament and somewhere in between that, getting me an NEC championship t-shirt. William, I appreciate you, man. Thank you. I know it's the first Thank time you've you. been on the show, but I look forward to having you back. I look forward to being here again. Thank you for having us. All right, man. Take care. Have a good day. You too. Bye. See you. Uh, coming from William once again, William Marias Benny of the Binghamton University Bearcats men's tennis team. Two awesome gentlemen following two awesome gentlemen. And uh, I feel very spoiled today to have the people we've had on the show. We're going to take a final step aside for a fast break. And we'll be back with the ingredients to success right after this. Avicoli's, located on the corner of Route 57 and Wetzel Road in Liverpool, New York, has been your trusted neighbor for decades. Located just steps from Liverpool High School, we're happy to have the Liverpool Warriors on-site, on-location broadcast at Avicoli's through Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora every single month, featuring student athletes, coaches, and administration throughout the year from Liverpool High School. Head out to Avicoli's today on the corner of Route 57 and Wetzel Road in Liverpool, New York, open Tuesday through Sunday for lunch, dinner, and drinks. We'd love to see you out there. And of course, you can call them at 315-622-5100 for takeout, delivery, and catering. That's 315-622-5100. And also find them on myavicolis.com. That's myavicolis.com. Having peace of mind when you're out of town, that your furry loving friend is safe and sound, means taking them to Canine Campground. Because we all know that when it comes to the love of our pets, it goes well beyond the call of duty to make sure they're safe and sound. Right, Lily? <laughs> So take a ride to 242 Johnson Street in East Syracuse, New York, and see Canine Campground and where your dog will be staying, in the classic cabin, the executive cabin, the grand cabin, or of course, the luxury cabin, because if you know Lily, you know she loves luxury. <laughs> now you don't have to wait to the last minute to find a family member or a friend that'll take your dog for a few days. Call Canine Campground at 315-299-4013. That's 315-299-4013. Their drop-off and pickup times are Monday through Sunday. Check K9Campground.com for more information. That's the letter K, the number 9, and campground spelled with a K, dot com. K9Campground.com. When you're going out of town, bring your dog to K9 Campground. PB&J's Lunchbox, the food truck that you love finding all throughout Central and Upstate New York, now has a street side cafe. So when you're craving their traditional favorites as well as their out-of-box amazing menu items, you can now head to 663 Old Liverpool Road in Liverpool, New York, located just minutes from the highway, the thruway, Destiny USA, and Onondaga Lake Parkway, PB&J's Lunchbox Street Side Cafe is there for you Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., serving breakfast, lunch, and and dinner all throughout the day. Get breakfast for dinner, dinner for lunch, whatever you fancy, including their award-winning grilled peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Find them at 663 Old Liverpool Road in Liverpool, New York. PB&J's Lunchbox, where we love to know what's in your lunchbox. here to wake up call with dan tortora where sports truly meets that thing called life i appreciate you being here with me every monday through friday from 9 a.m to 11 a.m eastern time we typically go past 11 so make a note of that for yourself for the future knowing that 
are going to be here with you a little bit uh, longer. And that's, uh, it's, it's an honor and a privilege to be able to spend as much time as we get to spend. So I want you to know if you're watching and listening and I've never met you before, that doesn't change the fact that I'm praying that you have a great day. I'm hoping that you smile today. I'm hoping that you laugh today. And I really appreciate you. I really do. I appreciate you listening. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate your support. I appreciate your positivity. And I just want you to know, wherever you are in the world, you're not alone. I'm praying for you. Whatever's going on in your life, I hope things get better. I hope things work out for the best. And I hope you trust God to guide you. I really do. And I'm speaking to everyone. I mean, hey, if you think I'm talking to you right now, I am. I am. You know, don't feel alone. And my best advice to you is pray. Be kind to yourself. Know who you are. Learn who you are and really be proud of that. And share it. Don't be afraid to share who you are with the world. It's not about the world's opinion. It's about you being yourself and making the most of the time that God gave you. It's not about the likes and the clicks. It's about not being on a deathbed someday wishing that you let your personality shine. Do it now. And be good to people. And happy, happy day. Happy day to you. Hope you have a wonderful day. The ingredients to success are up next here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. They're proudly presented by the fantastic team at Avicoli's that you just heard from. And I am honored to work with them of many years. Shout out to John and the gang and everybody over at Avicoli's. And of course, the Avicoli family for everything that they've done in our community for decades to be the difference in such a positive way. We appreciate you and I thank you for all that you do. It really does mean a lot to me. And uh, I love working with Avicoli's. So the ingredients to success is proudly presented by Avicoli's every Tuesday to round out the show. And today's topic is working together, working together, right? Some of us know how to do that. Some of us don't, but we just spoke with teammates, did we not? And we spoke with teammates on the Binghamton University men's tennis team. Andrew Fang and William Benny. And we spoke with coaches that work together, JV and varsity, Eric Szczynski and Fred Kent at West Chevy. So this morning has been all about working together. If the team doesn't work together, they don't win a championship for Binghamton. If Eric and Fred don't work together, West Jenny doesn't have the success that they have in building up these student athletes in the classroom and on the court. So there's a lot to be said about working together and the fact that that was on full display in both hours of today's show with our West Genesee guests and our Binghamton University guests. So I ask you today to really think about this. How well do you work with others? right? Do you play nice with others in the sandbox? Do you share your pal? Do you share your shovel? You know, in life, I go back here so many times, and I don't mention it, but I think about it a ton, is I constantly go back to being in a sandbox. I go there all the time. It's typically at Disney. It's typically at, I think, Caribbean Beach, and I just go back to playing in the sandbox and I go back to, you know, what I share, am I sharing right now? Are other people sharing with me? It's, it's, it's kind of a, a point of my life that is a daily reflection. Am I playing nice in the sandbox? Are people in the sandbox playing nice with me? And it's a it's a check yourself moment for me, right? Because people like to work with people that they like. They like to work with people that they enjoy being around, that they enjoy talking with. And when you're putting a team together, and, and we very much have done that with the businesses that we work with, 
you know, you talk about Carvel, DeWitt, the Wildcat, Sports Pub, Mon Paws, Kettle Corn and Popcorn Factory, GG Cards and Breaks, Avicoli's, Canine Camp, Dog Day Care, Chick-fil-A Cicero and Chick-fil-A Clay, Canine Campground, Dog Boarding, Pizza Man, Great Lakes Honda City, Mother's Cupboard, and our exclusive multimedia marketing partnerships with LeMoyne College, Bryan and Stratton College of Syracuse, and Binghamton University. And we put a team together. And you got to have a team that works well together, that flows. And it's not easy putting a team together on a court, in a pool, on a field, on a track, in a business. It's not easy putting a team together. Friends, you know, my closest friends, I call them brothers, brothers and sisters. And, you know, it's, I don't have any biological brothers and sisters yet. Franny, my cousin, I call her my sister, and that's how we treat each other. And when people talk to me, they say, how's your sister doing? You know, my brothers, Isaac and Joey and Johnny and... Rob and Ross and Nico and Miguel and Jason, you know, I, I have, and Brendan, I have brothers and sisters and people that I genuinely care about. And when you put a team together, you have to be very careful because I've called people brothers that weren't. I've called people family, blood and non-blood, that they're not. It's their choice, but they're not. I've tried to work with businesses that didn't have the same values and morals that I do. And not that I tried to work with them knowing that. I tried to work with them, and then you find out that they don't, and it makes it really difficult. And so what are the ingredients to success of working together? Well, it's in the title. You have to be able to work together. You have to be able to communicate. An ingredient to success of working together is communication, patience, morals, values, shared morals and values, understanding, kindness, empathy, responsibility. There's nobody on a team, on a successful team, that can be irresponsible and that that's going to help the team be late. And that's going to help the team not be easy to work with. And that's going to help the team fail to respond positively to adversity. And that's going to help the team. None of those things are going to help a team move forward. They will hinder a team, but they will not help a team. And, I just feel like today, you know, I came up with this topic before we had these conversations live today. And I think about Eric Szczynski and Fred Kent, Fred Kent and how they work together. And it perfectly led in to seeing what that really looks like and sounds like. And then Andrew Fang and, and, uh, you know, William, William Benny here and, and uh, I appreciate William for saying that I did pretty good with with the Portuguese there and uh, William Marias Benny, and you know having them both on the show today and and speak about how they lift each other up and how they're there for each other in singles matches and in doubles matches and you know that that all means a lot. It means a lot to me to see that because the topic was decided by me before the show, and then I have two coaches, JV and Varsity showing what it's like to work together, showing how that's successful. And then the tennis team shows how you work together and how you're there for each other in singles and doubles and how you're on an island, but that's okay to put yourself on an island. It's okay to, to do that. You can use it as a positive and you can all, you know, be a family. And, you know, they, like the guys are talking about, we don't let each other study alone. There's just a lot more than simply being in a match. And so I think, you know, the best way of showing the ingredients to success of working together as a topic, you saw what working together looks like. You saw it today on the show. You saw it with West Jenny and you saw it with Binghamton in action. Communication, common interests, morals and values. Both of the guys on the Binghamton team went back to, 
Well, Coach Zazula taught us this. Here are the pillars of our program. They both spoke about the same pillars. They both brought up the same words. And that, to me, if Coach Zazula is listening, should let him know that his message is getting through and that they're picking up what he's putting down. You know, working together is 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 about compromising. It's about give and take, ebb and flow. It's about letting somebody be in the limelight and not trying to steal it from each other. It's about sharing that limelight, right? It's about sacrificing so you can have the greater good at the end. You know, sacrificing, be it having to stay up a little bit later, sacrificing, be it practicing a little bit more, joining one of your teammates on a court late at night because he, you know, he's struggling, she's struggling, and you want to get it right. It's about sacrificing that moment of not switching defenses in order for Eric to train his team on how to learn how to get through something that happens in man-to-man defense as opposed to just switching to a zone. And in switching in the zone, somebody can shift. No, in man-to-man, if you get beat, now I'm teaching your teammates to shift and I'm teaching you what to do to not get beat again because man-to-man is what Fred teaches. So I can go out of this man-to-man defense and put you in a zone defense and I can win this game or I can let you go through the adversity of getting beat in man-to-man defense so that you can adjust and learn. To not switch the defense, but to ask you to grow from the weaknesses of that defense. So instead of switching and doing something else to say, hey, we're going to work through this and we're going to find the weaknesses. I've always believed that in anything you do in life, there are weaknesses. And if you can know the weaknesses better than your competition, then you can prepare for when they attack those weaknesses, how they attack those weaknesses. Maybe not even when, but how they do. You're supposed to know your weaknesses better than anybody else because then it defeats your adversary's ability to use your weakness against you. And it's taken a long time, my whole life, for me to learn how to use my weakness in my favor. But there's parts of my life now where I use my weakness in my favor. And I think it's shocked some people that went into that weakness thinking, I can get I can do whatever I want to him here if I give him this. If he has this in his life, then I can I can have some leeway in doing bad over here if I do enough good over there. And then people found out that doesn't work anymore. And it's feels good to say this is my weakness, but I've understood it. I've pinpointed it. I know how people can use it against me, and now it doesn't work. So, you know, I I just, I feel that it is incredibly important for a team to know where you have weakness. Every team's got weaknesses. Every team that's won a championship has gotten a weakness, has had a weakness. And you have to be able to understand it and help it and work on it and build it up more than somebody can tear it down. Teamwork is how you win. And even if it's just you, it's never just you. Footprints in the sand, baby. It's God. And so even when you're alone and you're by yourself, you're not alone and by yourself. You have God. And God is always working. I talk to God all day long. I pray all day long. Because God and I are teammates. We are working together. I can't go through a millisecond of a millisecond of a millisecond of a millisecond of my life without working with God. If I at any point stop working with God, I would feel the loss. I would feel the hollow. I would feel the lack of spirit. I would feel like myself. I would I wouldn't feel like me. And so you're never alone even when you are alone. You're you're working in unison with God. You're working with other people and you're working with animals. You're working with nature, you know, and, and I feel that there's something to be said about working together because it changes things. You can build a house by yourself, but it's going to take a heck of a lot longer than building it, working together with other people toward a common goal. 
And I think every team understands you can have individual success, but you're probably not going to win a championship if you don't work as a team. I think that's in business. I think that's in relationships, in friendships, in romantic relationships, in family dynamic, in teams. Uh, I think with anything in life, working as a team will always provide a better result than just trying to do it alone. And even when you're alone, like I said, you're not alone. To me, you're doing it with God. And when I know that, when I know like, hey, God, I feel all by myself. And he's like, why? You're talking to me right now. So obviously you're not by yourself. And I think that open dialogue with God really helps you to understand that you are never truly in it by yourself. And it's never just a one man or a one woman show. And I love that. I love, I, I think I run everything by God first before I go to anybody else, because if I'm running it through perfection, I got a better chance at the odds of, of learning something from God that I can take with me into whatever I'm trying to do and whoever I'm trying to do that with. So I, I think the embodiment of today's ingredients to success of working together it has been clear and and so valued and so wonderful coming from the wonderful guests that I had on the show today from West Genesee boys basketball junior varsity head coach Eric Szczynski as well as West Genesee boys basketball varsity head coach Fred Kent and Binghamton University men's tennis student athletes and NEC champions Andrew Fang as well as having William Marias Benny on the show. And I want to thank William. I want to thank Andrew. I want to thank Fred. And I want to thank Eric for all being a part of this and really working together, not even knowing it because they were all having individual conversations with me, but all working together toward a common goal of this ingredients to success and showing us exactly what it sounds like when you work together and all the success that can come from that. And I appreciate that so very much because again, I'm never working alone. I came up with to with the topic. God obviously knew how the conversations were going to go. And it led us into the ingredients to success that made it easy for me to go. Well, if you want to know what it's like to work together, watch today's show. <laughs> so a big time shout out to all my wonderful guests Eric, Fred, Andrew, and William once again. This has been the Ingredients to Success, proudly presented by the fantastic team at Avicoli's, located on 7839 Oswego Road in Liverpool, New York, right at the cross of Route 57 and Wetzel Road. They're open Tuesday through Sunday for lunch, dinner, and drinks. If you have a drink, then just make sure you are of age. And of course, as always, drink responsibly. You can get in touch with them by going to 7839 Oswego Road in Liverpool, or you can call them for takeout, delivery, and catering at 315-622-5100. That's 315-622-5100 for all my hungry people out there right now, which I'm sure you are as I'm bringing you into lunchtime. And of course, you can also order online at myavicolis.com. Dot com. That's my A-V-I-C-O-L-L-I-S dot com. Big time thanks for everybody that watched and listened on YouTube.com and Facebook.com, both, both backslash Wake Up Call DT, and for my listeners on Wake Up Call DT dot Podbean dot com, Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time. And of course, you can find our shows in the archives. Once they go live, you can go and find us on Amazon Music, Audible, iHeartRadio, iTunes, and Apple Podcasts, Player FM, Podbean, Podchaser.com, Podvine, Spotify, TuneIn, and YouTube. All you have to do is search Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora or one word, Wake Up Call DT. And we thank you all for going there and finding us. Make sure to subscribe and follow us on all of those channels. Big time thanks to our incredible partners that we have here in Central and upstate New York, Carvel DeWitt, the Wildcat Sports Pub, Mon Paz Kettle Corn and Popcorn Factory, GG Cards and Breaks, Avicoli's, Canine Camp Dog Daycare, Chick-fil-A Cicero and Chick-fil-A Clay, Canine Campground Dog Boarding, 
Pizza Man, Great Lakes Honda City, Mother's Cupboard, and of course, we are proud to be the exclusive multimedia marketing partner of your... Lemoyne College Dolphins. It's fins up every single month on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. Find your dolphins on Wednesdays during Dolphin Time, and that Dolphin Time coming to you the first and third Wednesday of each month with AD and DT featuring Athletics Director Bob Beretta and myself, Dan Tortora, every second and fourth Wednesday, finding the Dolphin Dive, diving into stories of student athletes, coaches, administration, and alumni. And you can find all of this by simply going to youtube.com backslash wakeupcalldt and clicking subscribe and hitting the notification bell on our YouTube channel. You'll find our Lemoyne Dolphins playlist as well. You'll find the Dolphins by swimming over to wakeupcalldt.com's homepage and on the exclusive partners tab, you'll find the Dolphins. For more information, go to lemoynedolphins.com. And as always, fins up. The Brian and Stratton College Bobcats of Syracuse are exclusive multimedia marketing partners with Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, where sports meets life. You'll find the Bobcats and what we call the Bobcat Buzz. That Bobcat Buzz coming to you exclusively on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. Student athletes, coaches, and administration joining us throughout the year to tell the story of Brian and Stratton College of Syracuse. You will find their campuses on James Street in Syracuse and right off of 57 in Liverpool. If you would like to start and or finish your education with a wonderful gem in our community, make sure you get in touch with Brian and Stratton College of Syracuse. And if you have more eligibility left, well, that's great to hear. Go to syracuse.bscbobcats.com for more information. Men's and women's soccer, men's and women's basketball, baseball, and esports, which is currently growing their program and putting their roster together. You could find all of our content in the Bobcat Buzz on youtube.com backslash wake up call DT. Click subscribe and hit the notification bell. You also find the Bobcats by clawing your way over to wake up call DT.com and seeing them on the homepage as well as on the exclusive partners tab. For more information, go to syracuse.bscbobcats.com and go Bobcats. <laughs> The Binghamton University Bearcats are exclusive multimedia marketing partners with Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. You will find Binghamton University with us during Bearcat time every Tuesday, like today, at 10 a.m. Eastern time, featuring specials that we call Moments with Marshall that happen every single month, and that is with Binghamton University Athletics Director Gene Marshall joining the show for a behind-the-scenes look at Binghamton University and the Bearcats Athletic programs and the Bearcat break room, which you got a double dose of today, celebrating with student athletes, coaches, and administration connected to the Binghamton University Bearcats. Find all this content by going to youtube.com backslash wake up call DT. Click subscribe and the notification bell. Look for our Binghamton University playlist on our YouTube channel. You can also find your way to the Binghamton University Bearcats by heading to wakeupcalldt.com's homepage and the exclusive partners tab on wakeupcalldt.com. For more information, go to bubearcats.com and go Bearcats. With that being said here on today's show, big time thanks to West Genesee. Huge thank you to West Jenny and the boys basketball program for asking me to MC your event for the first time ever. They do a banquet at the end of every year. It's the first time I was asked to MC the banquet and we had a phenomenal time filled up the room at the Wildcat Sports Pub 3680 Milton Avenue in Camillus, New York, which I ask you to come out to all the time, including with my monthly events throughout the year with the West Genesee Wildcats that are right over the hill. Big time thanks to Eric Szczynski and Fred Kent and a shout out to the JV team, the varsity team, to all the families and all of the loved ones and all of the friends. God bless West Genesee. Go Wildcats. And thank you for giving me the honor of being able to share that day and celebrate that day with you and with the student athletes and to have some rapid fire on stage with the entire varsity team and have the 
onlookers, the family, the families and the supporters get to be a part of it as well. Big time. Thanks for that. And thanks to the conversation and uh, all the wonderful stuff. And of course, the fantastic food at the Wildcat that I very much have no problem consuming while I'm there because it's so very good. And a big time shout out to our Bearcat break room duo today, Andrew Fang, as well as William Marias Benny. And uh, big time, big time thanks to them. Big congratulations to the team as a whole. Nick Zazula for joining the show last week when I was down in Florida, our second home. So thanks to Binghamton University. Shout out to the Bearcats on winning an NEC tournament title in their first season in the conference and getting to the NCAA tournament, which they'll be going to very soon. And that happening for this team for the first time since 2013. And of course, a big, a big thanks to Avicoli's for all their great food service and just attention to detail in our community over decades. And of course, for bringing you the ingredients to success. I hope you have a great day. God bless. No stress. Do your best. Find us on Facebook at Wake Up Call DT, X at Call DT, and Instagram at Wake Up Call underscore DT. For now, and for Eric, Fred, Andrew, and William, thank you for watching Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora and for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless you all, and be good to each other.